Okay, so I'm going to go through the construction of my one megabyte linear or paged RAM ROM board. The concept of this board is to be the one memory board that you need for an RC2014. It achieves that by using either RAM or ROM. So um, this chip is always a RAM chip, but this one can be a RAM or a ROM chip. And it has either linear or paged addressing. So in the, in the case of linear addressing, uh, you would um, use this uh, jumper here. So you would uh, jumper these two pins here. And the uh, mul multiplexers here select the address lines to be used. So these are actually uh, used to, to route uh, either a linear set of addresses off the bus, so using address lines A16 and upwards to address the memory chips. Um, and in the paged mode, um, a single link here would use these register files, the, um, the ones that are used on Spencer Owen's board, which supports ROM WBW. And in that case, these register files provide the additional address lines. So this board is compatible with ROM WBW uh, in the paged mode. It, it, when it's used in the linear mode, it will uh, work with the Z180, which has an extended address bus. And also it has the ability to be switched from linear mode to paged mode in code, which I am planning to make use of with the bus raider, so that the bus raider, which actually only has a 16-bit address bus, can use the paging capability in these two chips to allow it to address the full one megabyte of memory, and that thus it could uh, put software into those um, chips and also uh, it, that would alleviate the need for having a ROM because you then use RAM in both places and the entire image of the ROM can be written by the bus raider. So that's the concept of this board. Um, I'll go through the construction now. Uh, I like to, con to uh, populate the components which are lowest to the board first. In this case, there aren't any SMD components, and most of the components are sit reasonably proud from the board. So these resistor arrays, for instance, I'll just zoom out slightly so you can see that. These resistor arrays here and the IC sockets um, are about the same height, in fact. I think actually I'll probably populate the sockets first. So let's get on with that. Um, we have a few 14-pin uh, chips down at the bottom and a few more 16-pin chips in this section here. So I'll just go through those. Finding the sockets for them. Notice there's a couple of decoupling capacitors there as well, which are closer to the board, but I think those shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, we can bend their legs outwards to hold them in place while we solder them, so that won't be too much of an issue. The last 14 pin socket here. I could also have populated this um, 40 pin connector at this stage. Um, but I think the board will sit reasonably flat while I'm soldering that, so that's okay. Okay, so those are all the IC sockets in place. Almost, that one's got a bent pin, I think. There we are, that's all of those in place. What I like to do is just use a another board to hold them in place while I turn it over. You can use any kind of flat piece of material for this. 
So let's turn that over and then I'll start soldering them. Right.
Okay, so that's all of that done. So now let's just check that I've really done them. No, actually I've missed a few there, so uh, I'll come back onto those. Um, but the others look okay. Visual expect inspection is a very important part of building a board, so just try and make sure that um, you catch every every joint. So okay, um, I'm going to now put this in place. I noticed that one of the pens is slightly moved, which is a bit of a nuisance. Let's try and get that back into place. Okay, I think that's okay. So. And this one over here is slightly bent. Right. Start over there. Okay, that's gone in okay. Right, that looks okay. Okay, so let's head on and solder all of those.
Okay, so okay, so that's completed the connector. I'm just going to finish off the pins that I failed to do before on the memory chip. Okay, that looks like all of those now. So now I'm going to put in place uh, these two components, the resistor arrays. These are polarized, so there's a, a, a dot at one end which indicates pin 1, and that goes into the square pad, which is also indicated by an extra line. So these two go in here and here. I'm just thinking about how to hold them in place. Probably would have been better to do this before I put the um, the uh, sockets in place. Um, but I'll just try uh, and use another piece of material and just turn it over like that. So that's held them in place while I solder them. So I'm just going to get one end to start off with, one pin on each one just to make sure that they're upright um, so actually it doesn't really matter in this case they, they're sandwiched between the two the two IC sockets so they can't really be anything other than upright so that's fine so I'll go on and finish up these pins most important that you get the polarization right on these and it's actually very hard to see after you've put them in whether you did or not um, because it's hard to see the writing on them but I'm pretty sure I got those right so I'll go with that okay So the next thing uh, we're going to put in place are the decoupling capacitors, which go here and here. Um, so I'll do that now. So I'm just going to hold them and bend the pins like this to keep them in place while I solder them, while I turn the board over and solder them. Okay, so that's those two. Okay, just chop off the excess. Right, and now we have some header strip. So we need a two pins here, three, and then a square of three by three. So that's a two. Oops. So basically you just put your nail or a sharp implement and apply a bit of pressure to break these. So we need three more lots of three here. So this little set of jumper of headers that I'm putting in now, this selects three pins which are different between uh, the RAM and the ROM option, which is the U1 socket, the, the socket at the, at the bottom of the board. Oh, just messing that up, try again. So um, it's, I think it's fairly clearly labelled if you are using a RAM chip, um, which is this chip here, ASC, AS6C4008, then in this position, then you would um, jump over the, the three, op, three pins that are, say, RAM, and then if you're using the, uh, the ROM chip, then you'd jump the ROM. Um, I'm going to try this technique again. Hopefully that'll work. Just to hold them in place while I turn it over. 
They're already moving a bit. Whoops, no, that's not really worked. Okay, try a different approach. Okay, so I'm going to put these back in place. Okay, so I'm going to put the jumpers in place. So so that we can solder them right in this and I'm going to try and hold them in place with um, a female header um, this sometimes works to just hold them while while I uh, go ahead and solder see if I can get it to work I'm just going to leave that one for now actually and just do these. Okay, let's just check that they're straight, which they appear to be reasonably. Just hold them and push them up. So that they're, cl they're close to the board. Let's try. Let's try this as a way of hold of pushing them. Okay, I think that's sorted those out. So those three are fairly straight. Okay, this one's a little bit crooked. This one that I did all three of the pins, so I'll have to melt all three of the pins to get it straight again. Well, that's reasonably straight now, and then I'll do this one. Let's just see if we can hold that one in place in the same way. Okay. I think that one's going to be reasonably straight, yeah. Okay, good. So there's just... I think one more component, which is this 10K resistor, which goes in here. So, Just going to bend its pins back like this so that it's flat to the board. Okay, so the very last thing I need to do is just to jumper across these two um, here. So these are a spare gate on the 74HCT00 NAND gate chip. And um, so it's a good idea to, with spare gates, to um, connect them to either ground or uh, VCC and in this case I've used these little uh, bridgeable um, 
pads on the PCB to allow that gate to be used if I wanted to use it in a, a modification or um, a bit of prototyping. So I could just take the solder off these joints and use that gate. So that's the completed board. So now we'll populate the, the chips. So working through populating the chips now, um, this one is the 138. So just bend its pins to get them straight. And the, uh, the chips are labeled in the middle of the socket, so hopefully that'll be fairly easy uh, to, to get into place. Okay, now I only have one memory chip available and that's a, a RAM chip, so I'm going to put that into the lower socket um, and that is the one which in the linear addressing is the at the lower address. Um, and then I'm going to jump up the pins for a RAM chip in that position. And for my purposes, I'm going to choose paged memory uh, for the time being. And um, I'm going to enable, actually I'm not going to enable the page pull-up because uh, there is already a pull-up in place on uh, another board in the system, uh, the Z80 uh, board that I'm using. So I don't need that jumper, but if you don't have a pull-up on the page pin, which in some cases is called RST2 on the Pro Black Plane, Spencer's Pro Black Plane, um, and it's called page on other back planes, then um, you need to uh, make that uh, connection there so that the, that line is pulled up, otherwise the behavior of the board will be um, unspecified. So that's pretty much it and completes the construction.